screen. Okay, let me tell you a little bit about our presenter today. It's Paul Memi. Um, he's a translator for more than 700 movies and TV series, documentaries. He's specializing in, he specializes in subtitling, in dubbing, and, and, and also in subtitling for, for the hearing impaired and in audio description uh, for the blind as well. Um, he, ha he made a presentation uh, last week it was very successful. Uh, we had very good feedback, and now we are repeating. Um, we are continuing with this uh, presentation that will concentrate more on you did. Uh, technical aspects of uh, subtitling. Um, later on, at the end, Paul as well will announce some sessions that that we will. Um, schedule in, in the next month. Okay, Paul, I let you t get started. Okay. Uh, okay. So, it's my turn? Thanks. Yes, okay. the sound is coming great and as well as image. Okay. Okay, so thank you very much, Soledad, for this nice introduction. So, uh, since I had a little more time today, so I could prepare a PowerPoint presentation for you. Uh, as I said to Soledad, I'm sorry, we won't, uh, I won't show you any Pokemons, but uh, so we'll be uh, a bit severe, but I, I, I hope that you enjoy the information and take a big advantage out of it. So, uh, after the personal presentation that Soledad did, let's go on, because you were, uh, we are all together trying to uh, understand what is the specificity of audiovisual translation, uh, first off, versus literary translation. As uh, I said, well, actually, maybe I will repeat some information that I gave the, uh, last week, uh, but those points are so essential to, to, to understand, so uh, twice is better than once. So, uh, literary translation, everything is uh, within a text. When you are uh, working for cinema, the movie is the document, not the script. The script is only a memento. So you have uh, three dimensions. You have the visual, which, is, which has been recorded and shown on the screen. What has been recorded on the soundtrack, I'm not talking about uh, the music, of course, or the noises, uh, but I'm talking about the dialogue soundtrack. And on this uh, very uh, soundtrack, there is the speech. I mean, uh, the, uh, the the actual dialogues. As I said, it can be either a narrator text that is presenting the, the text, like in uh, All About Eve by Joseph Mankiewicz, for instance. And but most of the time, it's a dialogues between person to person between characters that are actually seen on the screen. And I proposed to you last week, and I hope some of you did the experiment, to discover a movie as if for half an hour only, let's say, if you were deaf or blind. Those are two different experiments. Discover what you see uh, as a deaf person and discover what you hear as a blind person. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, as a, as a deaf person. Person. You will di discover uh, that, of course, the, the cinema uh, is carrying a lot of information that are, uh, as I said, visual and um, audio. And those information will, uh, are actually informing, are actually giving a lot of information that are deciphering, deciphered by your brain, but that give the essential information to understand the text that you will have to translate. So, uh, of course, in, the, in, the, in a movie, you have a lot of things that are, have been recorded on screen. I mean, the two characters are driving in a car and they are talking together. Do you think that it is uh, essential to know that they are crossing a boulevard or that uh, it's a night outside? So maybe night outside is an essential, is a key information, but crossing that very boulevard, the precise boulevard, can be absolutely uh, Paraphernalia, it means con con contingency. So, to say that, uh, as we say, that's a, a saying, cinema is a gigantic storytelling machine. You have to focus on narration as the vector of dramaturgy, 
versus contingencies. You have to, to understand what is the narration of the film. The first thing that I do when a film comes to, to me, I see the, the full film, I mean, the, the full, in, uh, entire film, and try to understand what, what is it, it is all about. What is the story it is telling? And according to this story, I will have the key information that, as a translator, I have to convey, bring to the, uh, um, to the audience that do not understand the, uh, the, the, the source language. So, uh, it can uh, appear very simple and very um, evident, very simple, but this uh, narration thing is absolutely uh, to be uh, reminded. This Discover what you see and discover what you hear. I said last week that, that at that moment, because uh, the action uh, that, the, I'm sorry, because the, the, the object of the translation, I, I mean a text, is conveyed through images with people on, on screen that have uh, expressive gestures, you cannot consider uh, the text uh, only by itself. You have to see where the text has been emphasized by an express, expressive gestures. That's what I call a salience. When you have a, a park, when uh, a gesture is, uh, is indicating, designating something important, like a keyword or a key intention or a key expression, a key emotion, you have to follow, you have, you have to become an expert I'm sorry, I'm talking a bit like an imperative, but you have to, to become an, an expert of exploring those key movements that will give you absolutely essential information about the text. Where are the key words? Where are the key moments of the, uh, of the actor's play? So, salience can be visual on screen. That's, that they, give, they will give you the key gestures and also on the audio on the, in the dialogue track, on the dialogue track, I'm sorry, that we give you a keyword. I'm just giving you one example, I mean three forms of one example of an audio salience. Uh, you will accept, admit that he is poor has a different meaning that he is poor or he is poor. Of course, he is poor means not she, not uh, his neighbor. He is poor could mean he was uh, rich, but today he is poor, or, well, other meanings, of course. And he is poor means he's not rich, or he's not, uh, uh, whatsoever. So, to, to uh, let you understand that those audio silences will mark uh, important things in the dialogue. And uh, if we go together on a, on a future lecture, you will see that on, in the subtitling, subtitling softwares, you will have a soundtrack marker uh, showing you uh, these, uh, the, the silence of the, of, of the soundtrack. When the, the word goes high with the pike, it means that this, something is happening and it has to alert you. There is something you cannot miss because as you will see later, um, we will have to suppress things and we'll have to focus on the core of the message. So definitely on those key uh, things that the salients are um, uh, showing us. So indicators, after saliences, let's go to indicators. Uh, once again, on screen, an index, a finger showing something, eyes movements, a head movement, etc. can show you where uh, the, the meaning is. I can show something just with my chin. So, uh, that's mine. If I'm showing the thing in question and saying that's mine, you will know the reference of, of, the, of mine. The, uh, the, yes, the, the object that is referred by this pronoun mine. Also, in audio, um, in the dialogue track, when you say you're sad, you is a linguistic indicator, as I'm, I call it, a shifter. That's a Roman Jacobson term, actually. But you cannot know if you is a feminine or masculine. You cannot translate it since you don't have by the text the reference, the complete reference. And this reference has to be found in the audio-video environment. 
to conceive this uh, very environment as the context that you need, a context that which resolves the ambiguities of the dialogue text that you will have to translate. I go a bit further on this. I have to run, I'm sorry, because a one hour format for this kind of lecture is, is a bit too, uh, too short, so I have to run and, and please uh, accept my apologies. Please understand that we have to become like uh, expert in exploring the, the screen and the soundtrack, the dialogue soundtrack. All objects, events, entities, directly designa designated, will give us information. And the maximum of information you get, you will, uh, will provide you the maximum of, of choice. So for this uh, first uh, indication, I'll give you one example. Someone is talking about, um, here is your car. That's remember, I remember that it was one of the first time in the uh, uh, cable car uh, name uh, Desire by Tennessee Williams, actually by Elia Kazan. So car, you, sh you see, look at the screen and the car in question was a cable car. Of course in France, cable car is not uh, to be translated by voiture or auto or automobile. Cable car is a tram, tramway. So you have to see on the, on the screen, you know this, this very simple word, car? No, it was not a car, I mean a, a limo or a sedan car, it was a cable car. So go to it, where you see, here is your car, here, where is here? What is that car? Look at the screen and try to, to, uh, um, to see what car he, he, he's talking about. Now, second, about those shifters, pronouns, personal pronouns or demonstrative pronouns, anaphoras, as we say in linguistics, it can be very tricky to understand what they refer to. And I gave last week the uh, important example, the very clever uh, René Magritte example of this Ceci n'est pas une pipe painting. Of course, Ceci n'est pas une pipe, this is not a pipe, of course it is a pipe. And Ceci n'est pas une pipe, this is not a pipe, is absolutely a, subtit, a subtitle. So, why is it great painting? Because this subtitle is difficult to understand because of the ambiguous status of the pronoun ceci, this. So, this is not a pipe, is not an absurd assertion, since this can uh, refer to the pipe, in that case, of course, it is absurd, but it's it is not absurd anymore if this refers to the beige background of the painting or its frame, or this can refer to the whole painting as a work of art. Actually, it was René Magritte's proposal. This can refer, auto refers to the whole phrase of this subtitle, and this can auto refers to itself as this is this. So it means that when you have those shifters, I, you, this, mine, and, and all that, you have to be very careful because you can go really to mistakes, translation mistake. You have to really, really understand what is the reference. And as I said before, you, uh, this way, if you work correctly, if we work correctly, we can uh, complete our texts by the audiovisual environment and provide it with a uh, let's say, context. So, now a, a, a lighter part of this lecture, subtitling. Well, subtitling was not invented just out of the blue between, uh, you know, overnight. Before the invention of subtitling, there were the intertitles of the silent movies. But intertitles were inserted in between movie scenes and could last quite long. So, I don't have a a machine there, but it's, it went like that. Okay? So, in a way, we open the film to insert inside, in between, uh, a cardboard, a carton in French, and this cardboard would, would present you, uh, mind you, the narration of the film. It would wouldn't say anything about, you know, uh, anything else that was not focused on narration. But today's subtitles, the process is quite different. It's, as you see, one or two lines of text, I'm sorry, 
of course, you, if you go on Bloomberg's uh, channel, for instance, you will have 15 file uh, ribbon, you know, the stock exchange ribbon, etc. We're not talking about those uh, excessive examples. But, you know, for normal, let's say, normal uh, cinema uh, experience, you will have one or two lines of text. But the, the invention is that these lines of text are synchronized with the recorded dialogue in the soundtrack, and those two lines appear at the bottom. Of the, of, the, the, of the screen. We will go back to those very important uh, uh, facts. This description will give us the nature of the subtitle as, um, uh, as an occupation, let's say, a, bit, a work, but also the constraint uh, that uh, we discover here uh, because it's only two lines at the bottom of the screen and because they are synchronous. But a bit of history now. Before, I mean, when I started in this, let's say, business, uh, there was no laser, there was no video and numeric things. Well, we had video, but we, not, we were talking about linotype sub sub subtitles that were uh, physically uh, done on, uh, on micro characters, leather, micro characters. So you can see on this picture, those, were, those are really micro characters. I mean, you could take one little, uh, little line like that. You can see, maybe if you have my mouse, you, you can see those two lines, for instance, two lines here, one line here, and that's the size of a ring. You know, you could, you could curve it and, and put it around the finger. And this precise, I think this precise film, movie, I'm sorry, is Le Miroir by Andrei Tarkovsky. So, those lines were uh, later, uh, well, the process was that you, you could you would take the film, the movie, and bath it in uh, uh, a little basin full of wax. And so the film would be protected by a wax coating that would protect it, yes. So after that, those micro characters that we just saw would be printed through the wax coat uh, you see on the left the um, the worker doing that. You know he's inserting the little uh, little behind the little lines. You see uh, at the bottom of it. You see all those lines. He's taking one by one and putting in, putting it in the press, and the press would press it. You know from up to to down. And this is at, uh, at the right the vision of the press of the printing machine. I'm sorry, the press the printing machine. And after that, the film would go back to some acid bath to remove the, the, the wax. And where, uh, uh, I'm sorry, yes, and where the printing machine had uh, struck the, the film, stricken the film, uh, the, 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 the image was blank and you could see through it the light and so the subtitles were uh, white on the screen. So that was, let's say, ancient because you, we do not use anymore what we call at that time the chemical process for subtitling. Today, it's much more laser engraving. You see here a big machine. So this is the, the, the reel, one reel of the film. And there at the bottom right, you have the laser and up you have a monitor to, to follow the, the process uh, of the engraving. And this is the, the system. You have the laser beam that draws the letter, but being deviated by two small mirrors. So exactly the same uh, process that you have now in laser printing machine in your office. So let's go back to uh, our work, our precise work as translator. We have to understand that the subtitle has been conceived to ensure an oral communication uh, it's a prothesis. Uh, people do not understand Japanese, for instance. They live in France or in Spain. And so we have to ensure the oral communication uh, for those people that do not understand a language. All right, but once again, this communication is said on, on the screen, let's say. It's said in, in, in the movie. But this subtitle, as we just saw, is printed or superimposed. So. Note that it is a written translation add, added on to a movie. Written translation. This you understand and we know. This is current. This is, let's say, uh, the, the common situation. To become a, 
translation translator for uh, with words, let's say, we have to really masterize orthographic and and gram orthograph and grammar. We have to be expert in orthographic and, and grammar. Autograph and grammar. But also, there is something that is very peculiar to subtitling. It's this, what I call the syntagmatic cuts. Let's go back to the, uh, the picture here uh, of an actual subtitle appearing on a screen. It's better than running around like some delinquent. You understand that it's not good to cut after it and go better than running around, even if we had the space enough on the second line. But you understand that syntagmatic cut means we have to cut by meaning, meaningful units of text. It's better than running around like, let's say, some delinquent. Some delinquent is one unit of signification. So, second thing is we have is the typographic discretion because as we said before since we appear i mean our work appears on a screen on an image that has is been uh, you know very finely uh, let's not say calculated but created by the director and his uh, uh, photographic director photo director we have to be discreet that's uh, uh, that's what I call typo typographic discretion. We do not have, we cannot have, uh, you know, uh, invading, intrusing ty typographic. So no uh, uh, exclamation marks, uh, you know, ten exclamation marks. No uh, block letters. Uh, actually, there is a code for that. I, can, I, I don't have time to to go into details, but let's just keep in mind that. The subtitle. I mean, we succeed when we have our work being forgotten as a protest is added to, uh, to to the movie. And second, so now I will go back to my uh, to my PowerPoint. Yes, I'm sorry. Synchronized translation. Oh, I'm sorry. Respect of the shot units. So those among you that uh, love cinema and read a bit about the way the cinema. Uh, is conveying his, uh, his art, uh, maybe they will uh, admit that uh, there, is, there are some short units. I mean, the, the seconds in the bathroom, the seconds in the yard, the seconds at the university. And so it would be a disaster to have one sub subtitle overlapping between the, let's say, the, the yard scene and the university scene. Those are two stories in them. By, by themselves. So that's what we call respect of the shot unit, no overlapping. Except, when, once again, of course, a lot of, of course, there are a lot of exceptions to everything. For instance, in um, a trailer, when you have one uh, shot change uh, every uh, second or even every 15 frames, because they are story, uh, telling the story very quickly, of course, uh, the narrator voice will be will be overlapping everything because we cannot subtitle you know a, a shot one subtitle uh, every ten seconds the spectator would be the audience would be uh, exhausted in no time now let 's go to the the big big thing synchronized translation in real time that is the real invention to provide to give to offer the audience a synch Synchronized translation, as if you were the writing interpret of the movie while flowing. But this, um, let's say, miracle or illusion uh, has its price. We have to respect, we have to come in with the dialogue that we translate, and we have to disappear when it is, it, it is ending. So, the first step of the industrial process of the subtitling is dividing the dialogue text into phrases that will give each of those phrases will be the future subtitle, the future subtitles, and will indicate the, the places for those subtitles. I give you those three uh, figures. 
maximum of time on screen plus, plus or minus eight seconds, uh, which is a long time in, in a movie. Eight seconds is very long time, very long duration. Minimum time on screen, let's say eight frames, which is one third of a second. And maximum space on, on screen, two lines of minus, plus or minus 40 characters. We can go sometimes to 42 characters. And for those that are uh, accustomed to printing worlds, they know that, of course, 40 uh, letter I, uh, letters I are, of course, uh, smaller, I mean, less wide, let's say, than uh, 40 letter W or M. So this is, those are average numbers. Now, let's discover the documents that the translator is provided with. Uh, first, a combined continuity. So you have here, I don't remember the, what film it was. Yes, I think it was Backstreet, it was a marvelous film from the 30s. <coughs> Sorry. So in a, in a combined continuity that has been edited, uh, that's been uh, uh, printed, uh, with not with the, the from the script, mind you, not from the script, by, but I'm sorry, but from uh, the actual dialogue said by the actors when shooting on the on the set, right? Okay, so you have on the left you can see uh, description of the scene, you know, view on street, rain, background, waiting, people passing, street cars comes on, etc., etc., et and on the right which I think was not on the right, but for you. Ray, say, hello, Walter, hello yourself. Ray, you don't seem to be the, at least a bit surprised to see me. But what we decided here was uh, to cut for subtitle number 223, Ray, Walter, that would be one little subtitle of two lines, would be a dialogue. 224, you don't seem to be the least bit surprised to see me. 235, I'm not. 226, well, I like that. 227, you're not very sure of yourself, are you? Etc. That's what we will translate. So we will have to translate 223, hello. We will know that this, uh, this uh, particular very line uh, uh, lasts, uh, let's say, one second, and we will know that for one second we will, we will uh, be allowed to use 15 characters, for instance. All right, let's go on. Another presentation of quite the same kind of documents, not this time a combined continuity, but a more complex one that is uh, specially dedicated to uh, the translator for subtitling. That's what we call a spotting list. Spotting means placing lists. So it um, gathers a scene description. You have here, well, that's very, uh, um, the minimum of it, scene, interior, residence, Macmillan, Mrs. Ma Mac Mrs. Morland, and Conroy. And uh, you will have also the dialogue. So you see here Macmillan saying, well, have you seen, have you ever seen this before? And on the right, there is a subtitle proposal. You see that it is from English to English. So, well, have you ever seen this before? Question mark. And look, have you ever seen this pistol? Uh, well, the people that prepared this uh, subtitle proposal uh, thought that it would be nice, uh, well, let's say essential and necessary to, end, to, um, to mark that this refer to a pistol. Now, look at the, the, the last, uh, the bottom line. Macmillan saying, a fire warden just found it about a hundred yards from where your husband's car went off the road. And, of course, you see it's very long. But you, we have a, a very short time to translate it, and we are being proposed uh, a title under that form. It was found near your husband's body. So the fire warden has been uh, deleted, uh, uh, hundred yard things all the same, and uh, the car went off the road has been also deleted. So, well, uh, let's go to the left, and after that, I will tell you what I think of it. Number of subtitle eight. Start at that in uh, in feet, eighty uh, fifth, fifth, and twelve frames. It goes to and not including eighty nine, 
fifth and six frames, footage, three feet and 10 uh, frames, which can be converted, of course, in uh, time duration. Uh, but that, well, that's very simple, three footage. Uh, oh, don't ask me now, please, I'm tired. But uh, let's say that during this footage, you can have something like 40 uh, title characters. So it's approximate, approximately uh, the, 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 the length of the proposed uh, subtitle. Sub Subtitle. But the people that prepare this sheet, this spotting list, are not translators. It is not an obligation to follow those uh, proposals, of course. We have to decide. That's our work to decide. And I can tell you that I'm sure we can do much better than the last one. It was found near your husband's body. That's a question of talent and a question of experience. And a question of tools, and we will go to it a bit later. So this is a full page of the same uh, of the same uh, spotting list. Just one second for you to discover it, but I think you could understand. I'm sorry, uh, how does it work? Yeah, you could understand uh, the main uh, pr principles. So subtitles come in with the beginning of the audio lines of dialogue, come out when they finished. Spotting, placing the subtitles means uh, uh, finding the time code in, TC in, plus the time code out, TC out. It gives you a time measurement in seconds and frame. Uh, in uh, cinema, it's 40, uh, sorry, 24 frames per second, when video is 25 frames per second. And this time measurement will, uh, will give you uh, the allowed number of type of characters, knowing that uh, there is convention, let's say it's almost international, of 15 characters per second. Of course, when you are dealing with a film with a lot of technical terms, let's say it's an adventure taking place in the atomic submarine uh, with a lot of uh, technical names uh, and uh, Russian names, uh, those, uh, those, I mean, the words that, that you will use will be difficult to be to decipher. Uh, on the contrary, when you have the word like school, uh, school is in, of an immediate understanding. So when I say, when we all say 15 characters per second, once again, it's an average uh, appreciation. And just uh, for you to know, a movie goes from, let's say, 450 subtitles or 400 subtitles. That was an uh, accurate example of Mad Max 3 Beyond the Thunderdome, for instance, or Dance with Wolves, to more even than 200, uh, 2,000 subtitles like in Wall Street. So sometimes you have a lot of work, uh, which uh, is a danger if you are uh, paired on a setup uh, uh, price uh, basis. Okay, so that's how uh, we work. You Sarah. have. Paul, yes. before you yes. move on, there's a, a question here from Sarah. Yes. It's a, she asks if you are provided with this spotting list, uh, yes. including the master titles written out in the source language. Uh, that's a question. Well, yes. when, we do, when we are working with major companies, let's say the Broadway companies or really uh, 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 big TV channels or big uh, production. Uh, 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 companies, yes, we have those kind of documents. But, you know, sometimes I, I can tell you that two days ago, I, ha I had to work on uh, a longer, the longest version, the long version of uh, a Big Sky that was Howard Hawks 1952's Western with Kirk Douglas. We do not have any more. Well, actually, they had a, a combined continuity, but they didn't have more production, very simple production reasons, because those sequences had been deleted, had been put into the film, so we didn't have the text. So the first thing that, had, that we had to do was to uh, make uh, our own transcript of those sequences, and after that I could, uh, I could uh, start my work. So let's say, uh, at best, yes, we are provided with those documents. Uh, at worst, uh, there is no limit to the nightmare. Okay? So, uh, let's go back 
I, I hope I, uh, I've answered your question. Okay, thanks. Yes, yes, thanks. Good, good. Okay, the translator sheets. So now uh, this is where I, I work. That's a Word document. Okay, so you have on the left the number of the, the, the subtitle, number, the first the subtitle, time code in, time code out, and that the, the conversion has already been done with uh, this difference between uh, the 37th second um, and the 36 second plus six frame, which is 18 frames, gives us uh, 12 characters. So it was easy for me because I only had to say bien, it's good or well, or whatever. Uh, the second one, so I, ca I cannot uh, remain on this, but maybe if you get the video, you can study those documents uh, more in detail. But now, look, uh, once everything's done, that's, uh, let's say, the translation, as it appears, that's, that was a translation I did for the TV series, American TV series, Man Men for instance. So that's the translation. You see those texts, voici de quoi lire et une copie de répétition. I'm sorry. Once, oh, yes. Once mixed with time codes, those time, co time codes will be monitor the dots, uh, quotes, printing machine, either chemical, laser, video, or digital. So here is that uh, down, you know, you have first the first technical line, let's say, with the measurements for the machine, and but you, you understand that as uh, subtitle translators, we had to take uh, a full measure of this importance of those measures, and after there's the text, and this is those are the subtitles, sub, subtitles, I'm sorry, as text. But look once again, Creston. On the, on the right. Something wrong? No, everything's fine. I just find it funny to be here. No, it's the cows. Darling, I must run. I kiss you too, bye. And your brother? I will stay in this shithole. I'm going back to Copenhagen after tomorrow. So, uh, well, actually, the cut here, after tomorrow, should be on the second line. But to show you that sometimes you can understand uh, Dialogues because they, they uh, form a unity of, of meaning. Uh, like Creston, something wrong? No, everything fine. You understand that it's like a text, a full text. But sometimes uh, you don't understand. No, I just find it funny to be here. No, it's the cows. Darling, I must run. You don't know whether it's an hour of time that passed by between those two lines. And those very subtitle, subtitles will be fully understandable with the film. So it's another proof, if necessary, that um, the text that you will get is not understandable by itself. The subtitles that you will write is not understand, are not understandable by themselves. Everything is understandable through semiolinguistic operation of your brain, but you won't be only a brain, you know, uh, dealing with information, uh, um, audiovisual information that we do, as we do in the street, but here we will be experts in it. So, uh, can I go quick on this uh, cardboard? Because I already talked about it last time, and if you have the video, you will uh, discover it. That's from delivering the film copy and the dialogue list, plus uh, the translation work. We pre-screen it uh, with possibility of correction, and after there is the printing and the del delivery to the client. But uh, also, uh, that's the traditional process, and actually the process that is done when we're dealing with the big companies. But uh, you will find in the internet subtitling softwares. I will, uh, I will uh, organize a, a lecture uh, to discover those subtitling softwares. They are very accurate and uh, uh, very useful. They come really handy. They will help you to do the spotting, virtual writing on screen, preview the <laughs> viewing, I'm sorry, editing the text, and su su superimposing it. So you can find those uh, you can find those uh, softwares on 
on, in, in, on the internet. And also I can tell you that automatic captions uh, start to, uh, to be on, on, in the market. You can see it on YouTube channels. Well, personally I worked on a software for uh, automatic, automatized concision. Uh, it's very difficult and uh, it's, I think, easy to send a rocket on planet Mars uh, than to um, uh, automatically subtitle a film. Now, let's go back to the core of it, movie translation. Movie dialogue, a movie dialogue is natural language. Even in historical films, people uh, speak from a queen to a knight, but they speak like a day-to-day -day life, even if it's a queen's life and a knight's life. life. So it means that you, we need all current dictionaries, bilingual and technical. But now, let's go to our very occupation. How can we ensure subtitle readability? The constraint here is very peculiar. It's saving an average of 30% of typographic signs compared to a full transcription of the actor's oral dialogue. This is a, pro this is a challenge, I'm telling you. It can be achieved, no, first off, uh, yes, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. It can be achieved through what we call concision. We have to deal with a di direct way of, spe of, of uh, speaking, dialogue, rarely a narrator uh, text. Pragmatic, designating things, uh, actual entities, I call a, a, a person an entity, actual situation in process. The style has also to be, you know, direct, pragmatic, and active, serving the action development. Re remember that cinema is a storytelling, and a story in process, an action, it's telling an action de developed. And it has to be simple, because cinema is a mass media, is mass media. And so, these, those uh, things, uh, you will have, you will find it in your subtitle when you uh, achieve a good subtitle, you will notice that is, it has been, it is brief, effectively expressive, it's person to person uh, way of speech, and intellectually dense, it means it's focused on the message. And those are actually definitions for uh, what is concision and concise writing. So, now, from a long phrase to a shorter, more expressive, denser one, you have to go through a whole rephrasing and rewording of the phrase. You need here additional dictionaries, lexicon ideas, psychonyms, everything, please. Because translating for subtitles is being an expert. It's specialized translation that requires additional expertise. I can tell you that concision is not only uh, a good um, practice for subtitles, it's an excellent tool for journalism, radio writing, PowerPoint even, internet, etc. So now, we go to a big thing that I will only sh briefly present you today because that's really a big chunk, a brief presentation of what I call my conc concision toolbox. Five main families of linguistic tools operators that we, once again, you, that you could, will be able to study more in detail if you have the video. Graphic changes, construction changes, style changes, intensification, and meaning transfer. Let's jump into it. First, graphic changes. For instance, abbrevi abbreviation. This uh, is according to the typographic rules. General becomes or can be transformed into G-A-L. Short, I cannot give you an explanation, I just send it to you, all right? Shortening, once again, uh, the typographic rules are very definite, they are very precise on this. Professor can be shortened into prof dot. Uh, please, note that for every language, we have different typographic codes. The uh, typographic English code is different from the French typographic code, etc. Elision, elision, suppression of sounds. I want to can become I wanna. I have not can become I ain't. 
And once again, you have to uh, understand that you can you cannot in a queen and knight uh, movie, for instance, you cannot write on the screen "I wanna," except if it's a, you know a drunker, a sailor on the boat, and if you're sure that it was the correct uh, way of speech at that time. Metaplasm, apheresis, syncopa, apocope. Let's not go to linguistics. Robot can become bot. Cartoon can become toon. Madam can become ma'am. Automobile can become auto. Metropolitan can become metro. So it's you to, to choose. You know that going from automobile to auto uh, can be allowed in a certain, for a certain film and absolutely uh, stinky. Uh, in another one, let's say. Ellipsis, are you coming? Coming? You coming? Once again, go back to the film and see if you're allowed to do so. Lettering, I owe you, can be written, I owe you. It's for you, it's for you. United States of America, four with uh, the number, of course. United States of America, USA, half an hour, which is long, 330MN. 10 out of 20, isn't that 50%, which, is, which are three typo characters. Now, very important, punctuation, Colin. Generosity is my motto. Generosity, Colin, my motto. Quotation marks, it's awesome, as they say. Well, it's, quotes, awesome, quotes, Exclamation point. She's incredibly clever. Well, she's clever with an exclamation point. Parenthesis, brackets. Jake and Elwood, I mean the Blues Brothers. Jake and Elwood, parenthesis, the Blues Brothers, parenthesis. This is a limit, off limit maybe even example, because I, I tell you, I told you, uh, the subtitle has to be typo discrete, comma, this is very important. I bring beans and peas and ham. I bring pea, beans, peas, ham. And the end, the two ends have been deleted. Construction, uh, the graphic was simple. Construction changes now. Okay, I have to run. So I won't tell you a position, direct construction, etc. But look at the example only. That movie, which, that movie, which is a big event, goes to that movie, a big event. Is that true that you are happy? Are you truly happy? It's hot and delicious. It's hot, delicious. I want to be happy. I want to have children. I want to be happy, have children. Hapes have feelings. Chimps cry. Bonobos laugh. All suffer goes to apes cry, laugh suffer. Another example, you understand here that's a factorization of common meanings. That's where she's at. She's watching her son play, goes to, she's there watching her son play. Suppression of negative forms to uh, positive forms. I don't like soft mattresses. I like hard mattresses. Another example of other things, rephrasing. I weigh the same weight that I weighed last summer. I weighed as last summer. I'm, I'm not sure, you know, I'm French native uh, speaking, so maybe it's I weighed like, no, I think it's okay, but like last summer, you will correct me. What is it, darling? What, darling? Another thing. It's so delicious, a delight. Lock the door, I'm sorry, shut the locker of the door can become lock the door. Style changes, focus on the effect. I congratulate you for that lovely inspiration. Goes to, I congratulate you, lovely inspiration. We couldn't make it because we are too late. We couldn't make it, we were too late. I say that we should go for it. We should go for it. Look, I'm going now, goes to, I'm going now, and Luke has been uh, abandoned. A soda for me goes to soda for me. Won't you come and say hello? Goes to come say hello. 
You haven't said a word, you don't say a word. You might have resigned, you could resign. Tomorrow I'll go, tomorrow I go. Tell me you don't live in that place. You live in that place? Okay. Uh, two more. But as you see, it's very precise. It's been, well, how could I say, scientifically, scientifically uh, proven. Those are very powerful uh, tools for uh, reaching concision. But I see my watch and we ha are a bit uh, late now. So uh, let's go a bit uh, further in the presentation. Intensification will mean go focus on the key words, on the key meaning. So you will suppress all what is expressive, expressive, I'm sorry, all what is interjections, uh, all the repetition, for instance, oh, it's beautiful, beautiful, no. Okay, let's stick to it's beautiful only. Suppression of wicked terms in a series, they're so rich. They have a castle, a jet, two Audis, goes to, they're so rich, a castle, a jet. Of course, if you have a castle and a jet, you know, the two Audis are just uh, trifles. And meaning transfers now, metonymy and synecdoch. He broke his promise, he broke his word. A booby trap goes to bomb. Antonomasia, for instance, Her Majesty's government can be uh, shortened into London, so simply. Shorter synonyms. Immoderation goes to excess. Education to school. Subordinate to inferior. Liberated to freed. And shorter synonyms, but also I would say simpler synonyms, because everyone will really understand that school means education. Um, education is already a very a sophisticated term. To add to, to, add to our uh, linguistic operators, we have the semiolinguistic, let's say, operator. Actually, we should say two operators, audio and video, but let's stick to the principle of it. You will uh, learn to suppress or simplify you know, in your translation everything that is already that has is already been conveyed by the audiovisual material just one example let's say that we see a table on the screen the dialogue says is that the table you bought in your subtitle you can write is that what you bought what you require from the audience there is that they look what is the reference of that that shifter? And they will see a table, and that's, that, that makes the trick. Is that a table you bought? Can be translated, subtitled by, by is that what you bought? Uh, so there is the reverse uh, uh, operation that we did before. It means that uh, uh, we had to explore the audio and video environment to get the full information of our text, I mean, to get the context of our text, but here we are supported by the film to simplify and to uh, lighten uh, our subtitles. Uh, final recommendation, there are many, many, many uh, um, more <laughs> others than what I wrote on this uh, uh, little uh, screen, but concise writing, uh, let's say is apt uh, is to be ambiguous because as you see as you saw we are using ellipsis so it can be elliptic a lot of things are not expressed anymore you ask your audience to work go, to go to the screen to uh, to complete uh, the uh, ambiguous information of your subtitle in in going and exploring the the, the video and also it can be very impersonal because if you do not master this kind of, uh, well, actually I love it, but this kind of very peculiar uh, genre of writing, type of writing, sort of, of writing and even literature, uh, <clears throat> if you forget to use active words, uh, if you forget to be pragmatical, to always go, uh, you know, send to the image and the, the life of, of the movie, it becomes very quickly rigid, impersonal. So that's why I said 
always be clear, simple, vivid, cinematographic, let's say. And be sure that what your subtitle refers to can immediately be found. Do not read your subtitles as a literary text, which they are not. Read them with the movie flowing. So, uh, as I said, starting, uh, I propose you some forthcoming lectures. Uh, the one that has been scheduled on July the 15th will be an exhaustive approach, exhaustive approach of the concision toolbox with, I hope, an interaction with you people. I mean, asking me for one and one and one, uh, uh, you know, tool. Um, because, uh, you could see that we can easily spend an hour on this uh, toolbox. In fall, we will discover together, if you, if you uh, will, uh, the subtitling softwares, um, either in French or in English. Also, another lecture uh, will deal with dubbing translation and dubbing software discovery. And also another, the last one of those uh, lectures, will deal with uh, how to write audio description for the blind, which I think is a very interesting and socially useful uh, technique of writing and very uh, creative one. That's it, folks. Thank you to each and everyone, and I'm fully ready for your question now. Great. Well, thanks. Um, we have some questions already here. Um, first question by Wujing. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Surely mispronouncing your name. Is um, you earlier, Paul? You showed us um, how the original dialogues and the transcripts are grouped and, and numbered, and. He wonders if those decisions of which lines will be shown as a single line and as a group line are made prior to doing the translation, and if there is a standard way to do it. What do you do before the translation, or what's the best? Oh, uh, so that's definitely that's. Uh, you have my screen now, so that's plate number twenty. Yes. Uh, that's definitely a, a, a priority. We cannot work uh, if we have not those measurements. Uh, so before uh, every thing for the translator, there is this spotting uh, uh, work that has to be done. So. Uh, well, it, it is not, of course, it means why people are doing the spotting uh, of the dialogue for me. Uh, of course, I have uh, uh, the time to discover the film and to uh, become impregnated by, by uh, the film, the movie, sorry, and become impregnated by it. But uh, spotting is a priority. It comes before uh, any translation. Just one detail. But, you know, exceptions are, will be found everywhere here. Sometimes we know that the film will be released, uh, let's say, uh, uh, July the 15th, and uh, uh, we don't have the elements. So uh, we know that uh, we will have only five days to do the subtitling of the movie. So it means that um, um, would be the, you would be uh, well inspired to prepare the tr translation. But preparing the translation is uh, finding the difficult words, maybe. But you cannot, it is absolutely useless to try and write in advance a subtitle since you don't have the very measurement, the, the placing of it in its uh, little grid. You understand? Mm -hmm. voilà. Okay, yes. Um, there is uh, two questions on this. Do you also get the video there? And then do you do it as you watch the film? Um, a uh, long time ago now, uh, because I'm an old man, long time ago, we, we would screen the film once in the morning, let's say, uh, to a two-hour film. And uh, so you, I would you go back to my place. I would even have the, uh, the videotapes. So you would screen the film once. And sometimes you, don't, you cannot have the opportunity to see it twice. But after that, we only had the, the combined continuity. Of course, now, with the video, with the DVDs, with internet downloading, we have uh, the, the, the picture, the, the movie at home. Mm -hmm. And yes, I'm working frame by frame. I have two screens, one for my, uh, let's say, uh, web processor uh, software for my text, and the second is the film. And I, I all the time, I go uh, phrase by phrase, seconds by seconds, phrase by phrase, and frame by frame. So I have the picture, definitely. 
Okay, thanks. Um, let me see. There's another question um, by Robert. He oh, says, please, please, suppose, let me, uh, yeah. please, let me add something. We're yeah. dealing sometimes with very big money. If you have the luck to be the translator uh, of uh, Avatar, the James Cameron movie, I understand that you will have two men in black uh, sleeping with you at night, because uh, and the, the the copy of the film that you will be uh, delivered will be fully um, uh, ciphered with codes encoded uh, to prevent any stealing of it, to prevent any uh, uh, you know uh, uploading on internet. Uh, we have, we are entrusted with big money sometimes. So we have the uh, image, but it is a uh, gentleman agreement and sometimes, you know, lawyer agreement that we do not do uh, just anything uh, mean with the documents that we are entrusted with. That, that is mm -hmm. a, a very important part of our job. Like, you don't have, to, you can't give away the, the ending of the movie. <laughs> No, that's, that would be nothing. <laughs> to your friends, that's that yeah. really absolutely me. <laughs> yes. Uh, um, well, there's, there's a question here by, by Robert saying that suppose the course dialogue is, for example, a very blue color. Uh, would you try to capture that class distinction in, in the subtitle, subtitle sorry, or write it in a standard French uh, at the risk that it may be less easy to read by, by the general public? Where what, are you? What, Where what's are you? the choice? Sorry? Here? Um, no, it's a general question, I guess, about the the, the style. You, you talked um, a bit uh, about, about that and how uh, subtitling was was for for the mass. And and he asks, what do you, what's the the choice uh, there? If you have a dialogue that is very blue collar, you try to capture the. No, um, yeah, no, no. I, I understand the question. Now. I'm sorry. Uh, for instance, the Mad Men TV series, those people were dealing with ad advertising in the in 1960s in New York, New York, so the Madison Avenue people, uh, and they are uh, sometimes, oh well, definitely uh, uh, misogyne, misogynic, I think, uh, and they sometimes, uh, you know, that's uh, not white supremacy, but they're close to. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, we have to respect that. I mean, uh, you, you can refuse a fair, uh, movie, of course, huh, if you think it's a racist uh, message. Um, and denounce it, uh, but the, of course we have to respect and serve we are translators. The first thing for a translator is to be loyal and second to be free, to be free of the expression and the words and the formulation that we, we will use. Mm -hmm. No, that's not that. I'm saying that you have to be just uh, the closest possible to the movie intention, but sometimes you have to, uh, to cut a to cut an arm, you cut, a, you cut yourself a, a leg. So between, uh, between a, uh, well, a sudden, a sedan car, a limousine, uh, you maybe with you, those Madison Avenue guys, you can say a limo, and it can, can be the good solution that even the, the screen, the, the scenario, the screen uh, writer uh, uh, would have uh, be, been glad to find, you know? Uh, mm -hmm. So uh, being, Mass media, it means that, um, you know, for instance, I had the, uh, the, 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 the chance and the luck to, to, to translate, uh, help me with this, Mel Gibson, uh, Mel Gibson uh, middle aged film. Oh, I forgot once, once again. But it was taking place uh, in the 12th century in, in Scotland, I think. Uh, Braveheart. Thank you very much. Thank you yes. for the that that brave heart. Okay, so of course it, uh, and I saw on the on the script that the screen play, the screen writer, really was very keen on some expressions. So it was great for me to try to to stick to the intention, those written intentions, but uh, once, twice three times, but not fully. I mean, for instance, you can give the color, you can give the touch of it on certain terms. Uh, for instance, in, in France, uh, for flag, uh, I didn't say drapeau, which is, uh, which, which is very modern. At that time, we said bannière, for instance, or even in France, gonfano, which is even better. It's so beautiful in France. But I couldn't use a, a medieval 
uh, medieval syntax because, uh, well, actually I couldn't even write like that and no one could understand. So we have to find the correct balance between a color, uh, let's say a blue color, <laughs> those, your blue color people, or medieval times, but not in syntax, and also the balance with a text, the subtitle text, that has to be acquired immediately because mm -hmm. it lasts only one or two or three seconds of time on screen and finished. Mm -hmm. You know, you can't go back, you can reverse, except if you are on a, in front of your DVD. Mm -hmm. well, um, there is one more uh, with this. Um, he, uh, there's a question if about the processes. Um, there is one question that refers to, to the first part of the presentation. Yes. If, Ines asks, if can we say that to make subtitles there are two steps, for, first the translation and then the adapting. And if this means that these two steps mean also two prices. And then, then there's this, I will combine it with another question. The, she asks if the process of rewriting or shortening the, the, this adaptation is done by you or by someone else? No. So. I'm sorry. Uh, no. I, I, I want to, to answer your question uh, in two different uh, ways. Mm -hmm. Mentally, mentally, I always said to my, my students at the university that uh, when you are facing the phrase, the movie for a sentence, movie dialogue, you have to form in your, in your brain the full, loyal, the greatest uh, translation that you can find in your, in your uh, uh, gray cells, in your brain, okay? So forget about subtitling. It, in your brain, you have to be absolutely a good translator. Have every meaning that is in the, the source phrase. Have the style of it, have uh, all the color, etc. And after that, you have to do the concision work. Goes from, you know, the longer form to the shorter form. Like, you know, like in a, well, in a, in a cone. You know, going from the wide uh, to the, uh, the, the narrow form. But now I'm, I'm going, no, that's, that's very important. First loyal and second free. But now I'm answering your, your specific question. When I'm uh, appointed to uh, translate uh, a, f a movie, I'm not appointed to translate the, 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 the film, I mean the, the, the texts. I'm appointed to, um, to, uh, to translate uh, in, in the post-production work. It means for the subtitling uh, uh, markets, you see, for, for uh, you know, for, for, for having a copy subtitled in the movie houses or for dubbing. So, uh, I never translate a, a scenario and plus, then after, afterwards, I translate uh, the subtitles from my first translation. This doesn't exist. But maybe the, uh, the the attendee that I don't have I don't have he his or her name, but maybe he's talking about the case you're paid to translate the scenario, let's say from uh, uh, English to French for production uh, requirements, and after that uh, you're you're called again and they say okay now that because you translated the production script. Uh, could you please uh, translate the, the, for the subtitling, subtitled uh, version of the film, mm -hmm. of the movie? No, those are uh, two separate jobs. Two but separate process... jobs, and, and I'm sorry, Soledad, and I can tell you that between uh, the, the first, I mean, the, the production script and the final actual dialogue that is in the movie that has been recorded by the actors, there is a world. Mm -hmm. So, it, you know, you... That's mm -hmm. really two separate worlds. Mm -hmm. okay, okay, I think that that quite answers the question. There is a question about um, software, but maybe we will be covering it in the new session. There are, there are two questions about that. One, yes, what do you think about Eurosoft? No, sorry, Eurosoft. 
I'm sorry. Uh, I, I have to. I have to tell you something. I taught uh, the uh, the yeah. use of those uh, softwares, but first uh, French softwares, and second in my uh, in my work, I never used those hacking softwares. I'm uh, dealing with the studios. I mean, technical studios, and they provide me with the film, the spotting list, and the scripts which has been spotted, and I, I work uh, day to day, I work on the Word documents, but I will uh, uh, organize a, a full session, a full lecture on it later. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, today I cannot help you with the uh, such brand of uh, software. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, there's another question. Um, if you recommend, well, it's also about software. Any any software for for Mac, like Move Capitioner, uh, or maybe this is something that that you can um, you will be certainly covering in the in the session on, on on software. If there's anyone you could recommend right now, uh, the software. Here yep. there are some some students are mentioning uh, software that can be suitable for Mac, like Movcap Tishner or Final Cut Pro, for example. Listen, just for this lecture, I went to, uh, to Google and I, and I just typed down, uh, um, I just wrote down uh, uh, subtitling softwares. I had three pages, okay. Spain, French, English. So uh, go to the market and, mm -hmm. uh, and, and explore them. Oh, yeah. But be sure, be sure that some are only, uh, let's say, uh, amateur uh, softwares, just for your, uh, well, your, you know, familial, family, uh, uh, you know, web, uh, not um, cams, you know, the uh, handy cams. But uh, others are more of the professional format. Uh, so I will present. Uh, uh, I will present to professional. I, I said the other day, I was talking about Ayato, A-W-A-T-O, mm -hmm. which is a French speaking. I don't know if they have uh, an English version, and that's an excellent one. But I'm telling you, uh, the price is uh, not VAT included. The price is something like 1,500 uh, euros. Mm -hmm. But this is, this is professional. I see. Um, there's... Um... A question is: Should the constraint to be concise and concise and use a simple language be also applied when subtitling not a movie, but an interview or a documentary? For example, a philosopher talking to the camera and, and speaking about uh, a specific topic. Now, should these rules be applied also in that case? Uh, you mean in a documentary, for instance? Yes, for example, in a documentary. But that's all the same because the, the the question of the constraint is that when you uh, when you have a person speaking on screen, I mean the normal flow of the of the speech uh, is uh, is exactly a hundred uh, hundred and thirty percent quicker uh, or more abundant than what you can you can normally read. Um, so it's a question of flowing. I, I translated uh, many Eddie Murphy's film, for instance. The man is a, the man is a, I don't know, he's a bomb, you know. He's, he's talking like that. He's so quick. So in his part, very case, it's not a question of, of uh, saving uh, 30 person, but some, in some um, longer, uh, you know, dialogue, you have to save 50, 60 percent of the of the of the text, the okay. of, the, of the text. The problem is, the pro the problem is that you cannot read a full transcription of a, a spoken phrase. People that do that uh, cause the spectator, cause the audience, big problems of readability. That's mm -hmm. the, that's the problem. I'm a professional. Uh, I cannot deliver a subtitle that can be that cannot be read. You know there are a lot of uh, let's say a bit cruel. Let's be a bit cruel for a minute. A lot of people on the internet that uh, that like racing pi race pilots. They take a TV series and it's uh, up to uh, uh, they want to be the, the faster the fastest to translate that to subtitle them. I could mm -hmm. I, I checked on those subtitle uh, subtitling lists. I can tell you, first, it's full of mistakes, and second, you cannot physically.
physically read when you translate everything. So, of course, a full translation, and after that you put it into a uh, subtitling uh, soft, uh, software, but would it be subtitles? I will say no. But mm -hmm. people, you know, when we are talking about automatic captions or people, when we talk about those, uh, those things that, uh, on the internet, uh, on, on the subtitles database that are full of, uh, of course, uh, well, those uh, people, they do not care. They want an approximate uh, meaning and, mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, they just download it and they take the, the whole the night to see it. If you don't, they don't understand, they uh, click on pause and go back and go forward and go back and go forward. And so that's another world. Yes, it's absolutely, totally a different type of work. Okay. Oh. Paul, we would love to, to continue this, this journey through the subtitling world, but we are past like 20 minutes already. Uh, yes. There are still some, some questions.